In the previous lesson, we covered actually submitting a form using the HTTP service. But the issue we had with that was that actually we are not performing any form validation at all. So even though I'm hitting register, and even though the form fields are blank, we're still submitting the form. And that's not really good user experience. We want the user to be instructed to fill out the required fields, enter an email address correctly, perhaps enter an age between a range, definitely choose a sex. These are the kind of activities we want the user to perform. So how can we add that? Well, a super simple way of adding this is just by using what's called HTML5 form validation. Now, what that means is the browser itself is going to perform the validation and show error messages to the end user. Now, different browsers will show slightly different error message styles, but um, we're just using Chrome at the moment. Now, I'm only now how to trigger this is to add a required field to your input element. So I'm only going to add it to the email element for now, just so you can see how it works. But you can add the same required flag to all of the input elements, check boxes, selects, etc. So let me go back to the form. Let me refresh. And now I'm going to hit register. So you can see two things happens. A, the email field, a little pop up saying, please enter a value popped up. That's a, a, a built in Chrome feature. But on the right hand side, you can also see that the on submit function was still called. Now this, is, this isn't the behavior we want. We do not want the on submit function called if the form is invalid. So what's going on? Let's have a look. Now the issue here is that even though the HTML5 validation is triggering, the on submit function is still getting called. And the reason behind that is the on submit function gets called on an ng click. So no matter what the state of the form on a click, it will always call the on submit function. What we want to do is to trigger a form submission, but redirect the submit to an angular JS function instead a function on our controller. So how we do that is we delete the ng click here. We add a type of submit. So if you click a button with a type of submit inside a form, so we're inside the form, it will trigger standard form submission rules. So how do we capture that form submission? Well, we type in a new directive. So you haven't seen this before. It's called ng submit. And then we pass in a function the function we want to call when the form is submitted and valid. So let's go back to the page. Let's click, let me type the register function. Ah, there we go. Please fill out this field. And you can see on the right hand side, the on submit function wasn't called. If I try and type in a wrong name for an email, and it even gives you a slightly better error message. So please type in at there we go. And this this should this should pass. And there we go. Hey, form is submitted. So what are the pros and cons of using the HTML5 form validation? Well, it's the pros are it's super quick and super simple to add in. But the cons are it doesn't really give great user feedback. The display is dependent upon the browser, you can't really give custom messages. And really with Angular, you can do better. 